Hey YouTube, it's the test lead, and today is part two of functional testing, all the different types of functional testing. If you didn't see part one, I have a link somewhere on the screen, or you can watch it after this one. You don't have to watch that one first, you can watch this one first, and then part one, it doesn't matter. So the purpose of these videos is just to give you a high level understanding of different parts of functional testing. So here's the situation recap. You're part of a testing team, and they put you in charge of the functional testing. Currently, you have a high level understanding of some functional testing, but you know there's a lot more out there and you want better test coverage. This video will cover regression testing, interface testing, smoke testing, and sanity testing. So first, regression testing. The purpose of regression testing is to make sure that a new feature did not break already existing features and functionality. There could be nothing worse than a company deploying a new feature to the application, but then breaking the regular basic functionality of their application. That's a terrible end user experience. Imagine if your bank mobile application put a new feature in so you can have instant check deposits if you just take a picture, which is very common now. So imagine your bank advertises that new feature. But once it's deployed, you go to test it out and you try to log into your application and can't even log in. So maybe their new feature is wonderful and works well, but they broke the existing functionality of just logging in. So now you can't even access it. And as an end user, that's a very terrible experience. It can make me want to transfer to a different bank just because of that. I'm losing my trust in the bank and their application. This is why testing is so important. One little change that's supposed to help the application may end up costing them millions of dollars in customers because it broke already existing functionality. It is very common for new code and features to have accidental side effects that were not intended. Regression tests usually consist of a selection of tests that were already executed previously and passed. After any new feature, no matter how big or small it is, it's important to make sure all the regression tests still pass. If they were able to pass before the new feature, they should pass after the new feature also. Regression tests are also only performed on stable builds. Next, sanity tests. Sanity tests are a subsection of regression tests. Sanity tests are also often referred to as surface layer tests. As I said, sanity tests are a subsection of the regression tests, and they only cover the module where the code was changed at. They provide the same purpose as regression tests, but maybe you only have a limited amount of testing time and can't run the full regression suite. You then run a subsection of the suite and tag these as sanity tests. Just like with regression tests, same testing is only performed on a stable build. So maybe in your regression suite you have 100 tests, but you made changes only to the login screen. So you run a subsection that just tests the login screen features. Next, smoke tests. Smoke tests are also a subsection of regression tests. However, the difference between smoke testing and sanity testing is smoke testing is done on initial, non stable builds. It confirms the core functionality. So remember, smoke test is done on a non stable build, sanity test is done on a stable build. After that is interface testing. Interface testing tests to make sure that different components interact with each other properly. This includes the passing of data and control to each other properly, as well as the errors are properly handled. Parts of interface testing include that documents can be accessed on different web browsers, linked documents can be accessed on different platforms, encryption processes happen as expected, security requirements are met, and finally, how network and other failures are handled. And now finally, acceptance testing. Acceptance testing tests to make sure that the current application meets with the initial requirements. These requirements are usually given to the testing team early in a software development lifecycle process, and they're usually given by either the business owner or product owner. It checks for compliance and makes sure that the required criteria are met before deployment can be made to the end users. The different types of acceptance testing include user acceptance testing, alpha testing, beta testing, and business acceptance testing. And that wraps it up. As I said, this is part two of the functional testing. Part one will be linked somewhere on the screen. As I said in part one, please don't be overwhelmed. There's a lot of different types of functional testing. I'll also make videos on non-functional testing in the near future. If you found this video helpful at all, please like, share, and subscribe. If you want another video just like this, please take care. And hey, don't forget to learn something new today.